Uh, yeah, when I was in high school, I was a little Miss Bossy Pants because I ran the community service club and I ran it like a mafia boss. <laughs> I went to a Catholic high school, so we had a service requirement to graduate, like we all had to get so many hours, and that meant that kids came to me to hook them up with projects. It was basically the only social currency I had in high school. So I can't say I didn't enjoy the power. If I could have had my way, I would have run the service club out of like the maintenance closet so kids would have come in and I would have swiveled around in a leather chair from behind a desk, made them sweat, and like, you never invite me to your keg parties and now you want a favor. But we had to have faculty advisors, so I had to deal with Mrs. Murphy from Guidance and Father Eugenheimer. Mrs. Murphy worked in the guidance office, and um, in the outer office, she had this nun henchwoman. And we had all these nuns that worked at our school, but none of us knew what their actual names were. We just knew them by the offices they worked in, the library nun, the attendance nun, the guidance nun. So I was in and out of guidance a lot to talk to Mrs. Murphy, and the guidance nun and I did not like each other. She thought that I should be more respectful to her, and I thought I didn't want to. <laughs> so when we had to do the flower baby project which is when we all had to carry on five pound bags of flour to simulate parental responsibility because that's just what it's like right to have a kid um she stole mine to get back at me petty ass sister so it could have been worse though somebody's flower baby got run over in the parking lot they had to write a five page paper on child abuse there was flour everywhere so that was Mrs. Murphy and then Father Eugenheimer. He was an angry priest who taught senior religion. And he did not like that I asked, it was the year 2000, why the church was telling us we had to vote for Bush. I had been to protests that summer at the Republican National Convention in Philly, and I'd been reading a lot of Howard Zinn. And Eugenheimer did not appreciate me. So between Mrs. Murphy and Eugenheimer and me, it was like this three-way power struggle running the service club. I did not like them telling me what to do, and they didn't like me telling them anything. But amidst all this, we had the biggest project of the year coming up. It was the Christmas toy drive. Now, because of my enthusiasm and militant organization, we knocked it out of the park with this toy drive. We had so many donations that came in, and Mrs. Murphy had the list of the local Catholic children's group home that the gifts were going to. And it turned out we way exceeded the list. We had so many that we needed to find another charity to bring the presents to. So that night, after talking about it, I saw on Action News Jim Gardner talking about the Salvation Army, I know, talking about the Salvation Army in North Philly had a real need for donations. They were low on donations this Christmas, and they needed um, toys desperately. So I'm like, great, that solves the problem. So I went in the next day, got past the guidance, and I went to talk to Mrs. Murphy. Here's a place we can bring the toys. She said, no, we are a Catholic school. It's got to go to a Catholic organization, tribalism, insularity, crusades. <laughs> So I left the office, and I knew that it hadn't been for nothing that at the summer's protests, I had gone to those panels on wealth redistribution. And it hadn't been for nothing that last Thanksgiving, I had listened to, in its entirety, the 18-minute-long Arlo Guthrie protest song, Alice's Restaurant, on NPR. <laughs> this was a Robin Hood situation. So I got my friend Michelle. I said, we're going to steal those presents. We're going to deliver them to the Salvation Army. So she tapped her friend Mary Kate because Mary Kate had a twilight blue pearl 89 Dodge Daytona hatchback and we needed a getaway car. We also had to figure out how to get the toys from the bio lab on the third floor where they were stored down to the other end of the building where Mary Kate's car would be at the end of the day. Now I asked Michelle because she was a natural at organizing a covert assembly line because she was a smoker. <laughs> All the girls in our school, we had a whole system for the prison-style smoking, um, passing of communication and messages to let the right girl know that in the right bathroom stall, in the right bathroom, on the right floor, that the right Newport was stashed in the right toilet paper container. You can't learn this stuff in books. So <laughs> Michelle helped figure out the moving pieces and at the end of the day, we went up to the bio lab where all the toys were. All the service club members were there wrapping gifts, and we waited an hour until only a few senior girls were left who could be trusted. Michelle went and got the Dodge situated. Mary Kate was parked on the one side of the school with the engine running. She came back up. I pulled in a few trustworthy girls in a huddle. 
This was all the authority that I'd been dreaming of for my whole life. It was everything I loved, telling people what to do, sneaking around, sticking it to the man. I drew out the play on my palm and we situated ourselves. I was the lookout in the middle of, lookout in the, middle of the hallway. There were no teachers around, but Eugenheimer could come up at any second and he would definitely spontaneously combust. This priest made teachers cry, okay? I was terrified. If he spontaneously combusted, who was gonna teach senior religion? I thought I would do it. I'd start with Bob Marley, redemption song. So we set up, I gave the signal, the runner ran a bag of toys down to the hauler at the end of the hall. She went down three flights, put it in the back, passed it to Michelle, put it in the back of the hatchback, came back up, signal to the runner, repeat five times. I ran the last bag down the hall, down the steps, threw it into the trunk. Michelle jumped in at shotgun. Mary Kate gunning out of the parking lot, cigarette hanging out of her mouth, headed for Broad Street. <laughs> we stole six huge bags of toys, delivered it to the Salvation Army. They were so happy to get it. Mrs. Murphy and Eugenheimer never knew the difference. <laughs> now that I also am a teacher, I have a little bit of empathy for Mrs. Murphy and Eugenheimer and the guidance nun dealing with kids like me but that does not change the fact that I regret nothing. Thank you. <laughs>